Hello and welcome back to sax.co.uk. Now, as you can see, I'm joined by a very, very special guest with a very, very big saxophone. You might know him from Brooklyn-based band Moonhunch, or you might know him from Instagram or TikTok or the internet or wonderful places like that. I'm, of course, joined by the fantastic Michael Wilbur. Hello. Thanks for having me, Michael. Oh, you're more than welcome, Michael. <laughs> Michael. Michael. You are an incredible saxophonist. I'm gonna just blow, um, smoke up here for a moment and just say you're really great and uh, incredible tenor saxophone player but very very famous for playing this monstrosity the bass saxophone so tell me a little bit about the first time you decided you wanted to transition to bass saxophone uh, was there a special moment or was it like one of these things you fell into uh so when moon Hooch first started playing on the street we actually only had two tenor saxophones mm. and um we couldn't afford a bass sax at all we were just buskers so um that's when actually Wenzel started using the cone mm. in the in the horn. He found a cardboard tube and stuck it in the horn to get lower notes out. But then eventually we started gigging and touring and we could afford a bass saxophone. And we bought an old con, uh, it was pretty beat up. And I just started playing it and fell in love with the sound and uh, you know the versatility mm. of the instrument. Yeah, because it's the versatility that gets me about the bass, mm. because a lot of players, you might be included in here, you hear bass and you think, <laughs> burr, burr. but it's actually got, oh, I've been listening to you and you're going to be listening throughout this video. It's got so much flexibility. It's got so much warmth to it. <laughs> Um, were there any technique um, things you had to sort of adapt when you picked up the bass for the first time? Absolutely. Um, you know, I've noticed on a couple different, at first I thought it was my bass saxophone that had an issue, but I find the middle D and D sharp don't speak as well as the palm key D and D sharp. So that's something I have to get used to. Um, you know, I've been using just the palm key uh, notes rather than the traditional fingerings. Um, and also the embouchure and the, the, the inner voicing is just completely different. Yeah. Um, so it was, it's, a, it's a real beast and it takes a lot more air, <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> as you, know, you could imagine. But a after about a week or two of playing along with it, it really started to feel like a big tenor. Yeah. You know? And uh, that's how it plays. Yeah, it just plays. You play it like a big tenor. Yeah. It's fine. And um, of course, you like sort of super dynamic on stage as well. You like to move mm -hmm. about. You like to get like moving with it. I mean, the, the adjustment for that must have been absolutely huge. I mean, you're still tenor playing now in the yeah, as well. So you suddenly like when you you go from one to the other, and you're like, oh god, I could suddenly backflip and stuff yeah, like that. Seriously. Yeah. yeah. Did it? Did, so what sort of on stage? Um, adjustments did you have to make the moment you started switching to bass? Well, I had to get a, a good harness. Yeah. That was that was the first thing I did. Um, and then actually I started doing more and more strength training. And yeah. that really helped it because, um, so I went on tour with Lucky Chops a few times and exclu I was exclusively playing bass saxophone. So that was when I was like, okay, I need to really strengthen my back and like, <laughs> You know, was it one of those things where you suddenly found yourself just falling forward? Yeah, you know, it, it pulls you forward, and after an hour and a half, you're you're in pain, and that's just after the first gig. And if you have two weeks of gigs, you're like, okay, I gotta reassess my situation here. Yeah. Um, but the strength training really helped a lot with bass saxophone and cardio. Yeah. Uh, so you know, exercise was a huge part of my thing. Yeah, well, you're going to have to. I guess it's a workout in and of itself at the end yeah. of the day. It's strength chain, you're lifting it up. I think I would just snap two vertebrae just looking at it. So, yeah, <laughs> I, can, I can imagine how hardcore that is. playing old con you're not on the old con base anymore now so what's your current setup what are you playing right now i'm playing a sax.co.uk sakusu bass saxophone and i'm in love with it the the second i i actually have i don't know if you saw i have um a, 
what do you call it? Uh, unboxing video. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have yeah. an unboxing video of the Sakusu mm -hmm. where I'm just like absolutely blown away. Yeah. And um, yeah, ergonomically, it's, it's far superior to the old cons. Um, it took some getting used to because the, the neck wrap really does make a difference in the response of the horn. Yeah. Um, these are very, very like open and warm and um, very responsive. The Sakusu and the French wrap horns, they have a little more resistance, which makes them a, a much more, it, it's almost like a narrower sound, but it's like a laser beam. So it's like a laser beam of bass. That, that's how I describe laser it. Laser beam of bass. Whereas this is more Strap like, line. Yeah, yeah, this is more like spread. Yeah. You know? And warm. Yeah, well, actually, we should say the Sakuzu is not here today, unfortunately. Uh, we are currently sold out. Uh, do call and inquire. Come on, do it. I dare you. But this, uh, I've got to say a massive thank you to my friend Paul Bartholomew, who has lent us this fantastic Kyleworth base to try today, which is an absolute machine of a thing. Um, mouthpiece wise, what's your mouthpiece setup on a ba uh, bass? Because there's an argument to be said, some players use baritone mouthpiece, some players use bass mouthpieces, some players use bass mouthpiece with baritone reeds, and blah, 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 blah. it gets quite confusing. So what's your personal choice? So I love my uh, Sayo Signature mouthpiece. Uh, I, I've, we've sent, I've sent mouthpieces back and forth from France to the US probably uh, 20 times. Yeah. Like, to, to really get it right. Um, I don't have it with me today, as you can see. This is also an incredible mouthpiece. I love this mouthpiece. I played this before I, I played the Sios. This is a Jody Jazz 7 Star Bass uh, DV. Yeah. And uh, it's also incredible. Um, so yes, They pack a lot of punch, those. They do. Uh, tell me a bit about the Sios um, experience, actually, because um, you're very lucky, not very lucky, you've earned the right to have your own signature um, piece. What was the uh, process of them getting that piece sorted out? Yeah, so basically uh, Pauline, the CEO of the company, wrote me. Well, actually, I met her in France. Uh, it was either France or Belgium. We met over there somewhere. Uh, one of those places. One the of same. those European places. Denmark. <laughs> well, it could have been any of them, yeah. <laughs> and, no um, yeah. No, we, we met up, and she just offered right away. to. She loved our music mm. and um, offered to give us, me and Wenzel, some, uh, some signature mouthpieces. That's so. Funny. So we, you know, we crafted it with her and, and found some that we really loved. Did you add any like special like little touches to yours or is it kind of uh, like a straight ahead? No, it's pretty straight ahead. It has my my actual signature on it. Oh, that's cool. You know, that's your literal signature. Yeah. There yeah. we go. We stock those as well, by the way. So if you are interested, you should come and check them out here at sax.co.uk anytime you like. <laughs> also have a very, very popular Instagram and TikTok and all of those fantastic things. Um, a lot of our viewers, including us actually, are always looking to build our brands and always trying to expand because it's like the gateway now to getting noticed. And what sort of techniques have you used to like project your name out into like, the internet ether? What advice would you give to someone trying to do that? Uh, the best advice I can give is to just create 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 mm. you know just make your art and share it don't be afraid to share it i think that's the hardest thing for a lot of artists and creators is we make things and then we just hold on to them we're like ah oh, it's not good enough or nobody's gonna like it you know we and we're afraid to share it with the world but um the reality is even if it's not good enough which you know people probably won't think that um you know it's it'll be forgotten about immediately. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, does, it doesn't matter actually. Yeah. Um, and it's, social media is good because you can put things out there and you see what works, you know? And if, if what is working aligns with what you love to do, then that's a win-win yeah. and you can do more of that. Um, so it really, um, it's a great place to try things out, you know? Um, yeah, so that would be my advice. Just create, put it out there, don't be afraid. Um, and even if you get haters on it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Have you got 
got any examples of any particular like techniques that maybe someone at home has got a baritone or a bass that would might like you know the Michael Wilbur special technique? Mm. Is there anything in your mind that comes that we could quickly just steal some of that secret sauce? Mm. Um, well, one thing I like to do when I'm playing bass lines on the bass is is it's like a I don't actually have a name for it, but it's kind of a it's a, it's a style of tonguing. Mm. where you, you put the tongue on the reed and you kind of hold it there while you're playing. And in my song, Smash, I do that. You know, it's kind of like... Yeah, exactly. Okay. It's like a muted, I guess you could call it like mute tonguing. Okay. Yeah, because it's, it, it, you know, it, I guess it's analogous to, um, you know, mute picking, I guess you call it. I'm yeah, not a yeah. guitarist. But I know they do that. They, yeah, they, they, do that. they mute it with the palm muting the, thing. Palm muting. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. I have guitar. I know. I know everything. I do. So, so it's like that. You know, you you kind of put the tongue on it. You leave it there for a second. That's a that's a technique. I don't know if it's my special, but no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, it's really really cool because it gives that sort of like it gives. Is it like? Oh, this wave effect. I yeah, want to keep yeah, it that. Yeah. It gives it sort of like a better than just tongue, like hard tonguing. So yeah, Absolutely. no, that's rad. That's super cool. I love using multiphonics yeah. uh, in general on all my horns, but on bass sax, because it's so low, the rub between the notes, you can really hear the notes. So yeah. like this one, this is like the basic one. I don't, you, you probably know this one. The A and the one, two, three in the bottom with the E flat. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's good. It's all right. Yeah, it's kind of an eerie, yeah. eerie uh, horror movie soundtrack. Yeah, no, that's cool. Uh, Multiphonics wise, like on tenor saxophone, of course, yeah. you're smacking on the altissimo, mm -hmm. but is there like a, an element on the bass of this? Because, I mean, you, Leo P, other players like that are really making it very, very popular. Mm. Do you feel like there's almost like uncharted territory when it comes to those multiphonics and you're like really Absolutely. digging into stuff mm -hmm. um, compared to like on a tenor saxophone where it's been very heavily explored? Definitely. I, I, I'm finding new things all the time on this yeah. instrument. Um, it's interesting. Something I noticed about the bass sax is the altissimo, the fingerings, at least on mine, are all a half step off. But perfectly half step off, like in tune. Let me see. Yeah, see? Yeah. That's, that should be an A. But it's an a, a flat. Yeah. It almost sounds like a. It's, it's got that almost like a snake charm or yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's very, very interesting. Uh, so this horn doesn't have a high F, so it's hard to do most of the multiphonics. Yeah. Um, but you get the idea of what it yeah, sounds like. Yeah, no, it's cool. It's that, that kind of discovery thing about the instrument. Yeah, as exactly. Well. It's super cool. And it, it has so many nice overtones. So you know, if you're doing like circular breathing stuff, I mean. You know Colin Stetson, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he's the bass sax circular breathing master. Yeah. Uh, Honestly, pioneer. I'm I'm not really sure how he's still alive because I think uh, me blowing a bass sax fan, I'd be like, yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> like he's just so like, oh, he's in madness. And so he's good. singing while he's doing it, yeah. and you know, so definitely check out Colin Stetson if you haven't heard him. Do that after you've watched all our videos <laughs> and all of Michael's videos. Watch ours, watch Michael's, then watch that third. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, you should definitely check it out. It's incredible. I guess the last thing I want to do is just any advice to any of our uh, viewers out there want to pick up the bass saxophone, what advice have you got other than just do it? Or maybe it is just do it. Yeah, do it. And, um, you know, the Sakusu is a seriously great horn for a, a low cost like didn't even tell him to say that it's, it's worth great. it they didn't ask me to say that it's worth it that's amazing it's worth it yeah buy the sakuzu otherwise we'll find you yeah right thank you so much for coming down man it's been an absolute pleasure please be sure to check out michael wilbur on everything that you can please <laughs> like share and subscribe Please like yeah that was just, i was just i like that can you just do that for every line yeah. okay so please like <laughs> share and subscribe. <laughs>
<laughs> to both me at sax.co.uk and Michael Wilbur on everything you can. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. Sacks.